photos are either nouns or verbs. At least for color film, I don't think color film will be around in 10 years. I won't. Now you're making me hungry. Yeah. All right, we're back with another episode of Walkie Talkie. We're, we're here with George, founder of the New York City Street Photography Collective. George, how you doing? I'm doing great. That's Feeling good. good. It's a nice, hazy, poor air quality day. So we're gonna walk around, get some weird shit in our lungs, and maybe take some photos. How long you been shooting street? Uh, shooting street, I would say since, like I started hitting it hard 2015. Shortly after started the New York City Street Photography Collective. Um, been taking photos for probably about 15 years. In 2015, I decided to move to New York to pursue street. From Florida, right? From Florida, yeah. yeah. Whereabouts in Florida are you from? Uh, originally from Tampa, Florida. Yeah, the Gulf side. Brought my dog and moved and yeah, I don't know. Been here ever since trying to figure out photo stuff. Let's get the gear stuff out of the way. Today we're shooting with the Mamiya 7. Mamiya 7, the new, uh, newer Light Labs. And what film are we shooting? Uh, good old Portra 400. Focal length? Uh, this is a 65, which is like a 32, uh, which is actually pretty nice. I've always kind of found 28 to be a little too long. Uh, or too, too wide and uh, 35 to be a little too tight. So this kind of is like right in the middle. Plus it being medium format, you can really play with depth of field a little more. This here is Grand Central. Um, and we're, I guess we're just gonna wander around Midtown. I guess so, we're gonna do the Midtown thing. You know, the good old, good old reliable. Old reli got an old reliable Porsche 400 and an old reliable Midtown. Yep, good old Midtown. Can't, can't go wrong with that. Let's, let's get to walking. Do it. Did you, you moved to New York for street photography? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I had a job. I used to work at at and I was like a sales executive. And I, you know, I hated the job, good money, benefits, yada, yada. Um, but I really wanted to pursue street and like living in New York was always kind of a thing uh, like that I've always wanted to do. Um, I had a lot of family here growing up, you know, so I would come visit like, you know, summer breaks, winter breaks, did a, a transfer with the job, made the move started shooting almost every day like on lunch breaks before work you know on the commute to work after work on the weekends um yeah i don't know i did that for for a few years what got you into street photography while you were in tampa i've always kind of been into people watching the camera kind of lend itself well to that i didn't know what I, what it was you know at the time but i you know i would try to do that as often as i could you know go on vacation you know come to new york or wherever we went photograph on the street walking around. And then finally, I took like a like a photo 101 class at a community college in Tampa. And um, one of it was one of the things topics they covered was the history of photography, we get to attache and, you know, and then his idea of taking a large camera out and photographing on the street. And then, you know, further down the line, we get to like, Brisson and Winogrand and all those guys. Um, and then it like, I was like, Oh, okay, so that's kind of what I want to do. It's like those guys. Um, and then I was like, well, the best place to do it is New York City. You moved to New York City in 2015. I feel like it's around the same time you started NYC SBC. Yeah, shortly after. I, I moved this like May 2015. You know, I, I was walking around a lot, taking a lot of pictures. They all sucked. And, you know, I, I realized that I needed to find other like minded photographers to kind of help be able to talk to somebody about what I'm doing and like what they're doing and inspire one another and, you know, give each other feedback and critiques and all that fun stuff. I decided to, to start like a meetup and I just put a post like on Reddit, the street photography subreddit. I think like a Facebook group, I can't remember which one, but I was just like, hey, you know, on this day, I'm gonna be at this coffee shop. Uh, you know, if you're into street photography and you just kind of want to meet up and talk about photos and uh, two people showed up. That was uh, Rex and Zach Cabanis, Rex Kandai and Zach Cabanis. On the second or third meeting, Chris Voss showed up. And then, you know, it slowly kind of grew little by little, month over month. Was there a vision for the collective? No, not, not, not exactly. No, no vision. No, I was just kind of like just a place to hang out and talk. Like, you know, there was, you know, a lot of like street photography, like photo walks and like those types of things. Like, but there were just like a bunch of group of people walking around taking photos. And I don't know, there was no, very little conversation about photography. And so I kind of wanted to make something that was more about talking about photography. May 2019, I decided to open up like a gallery space where we could host events and do shows. When the pandemic hit, you know, we couldn't do shows and artist talks and like in-person workshops and stuff like that. So to kind of like pay the rent, I decided to build out a photo lab 
you know, started acquiring scanners and processors and all that stuff. And that kind of evolved into the new space, contact photo. I kind of wanted to separate it from being such a niche street photography focused thing and, and more of a broader photo thing. Um, you know, street photography is still a very important part of like my identity, contact photos identity. Um, but I find that street photography definitely draws way more dudes and that, it can be very kind of isolating to a lot of other communities. And so, I don't know, like I kind of want to, I don't know, make it more inclusive and, you know, open it up to a more, you know, a little slightly broader styles of photography. So that's been pretty much my main focus these last couple of years is kind of growing that. This year, the big focus is building like a solid education program, having like a variety of reoccurring workshops and classes that really I think are, are missing in like the greater photo, like education space. Again, focus a lot on like talking about photos. I think that's um, missing in a lot of places, you know. That's specific for contact photo, yeah. right? What is the future for NYCSPC then? Um, NYCSPC is kind of just back to its core function of like just like a crew, you know, of getting together, talking about photos. Like we'll sometimes do like like uh, little dinner parties at one of somebody's house. Like one of the members will host, you know, we'll order some pizzas or falafels, I don't know, whatever. Get some beers and some wine and kind of just like, you know, throw some four by sixes on the table and you know, hang out, talk about photos. So again, it's kind of more of like that supporting group, how it started. And so I'm kind of just want to take it back to that. Yeah, I think another topic I'd like to touch on is like, like so many people don't print their work, you know, and like this idea, like people shoot film to send to a lab to then have a lab technician decide what it should look like. And then, you know, they get their JPEG back and then they don't touch it. It's, it's I mean, it's like, shooting a digital camera on auto white balance, which is fine. But to like spend money on film and then to try to like hold on to this idea like, oh, it's film, it's analog, it's, you know, da 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 da, but you don't do any of the traditional analog stuff. It's kind of like, you know, what's the point? You might as well just, you know, shoot digital. But I guess more so like, you know, the importance of making prints, but also like knowing how to make a print, I think is, is also an important component to you know, photography is making a photograph, you know, and I think people just aren't making photographs, you know, they're just making images. Training your eye to, to see color shifts, knowing that like that gray, like the, the asphalt should be gray and not like magenta or green, you know, or yellow. That takes time to, 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 to see those shuttle, subtle shifts. What's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten when it relates to street photography? I think, uh, just persistence, you know, just making it like a regiment, going out, photographing, and then having hope, you know, having somebody look at the stuff. How would you suggest somebody does that who doesn't live in a like, city where there's so many street photographers? Yeah, that's the hard part. I mean, I, I, I get, you know, not super often, but every once in a while I'll get a DM from some you know, some person somewhere in the world that found that NYCSPC and would really like something like that in their town. Again, persistence. Like I, I held, I had a meeting on the same Thursday of the week at the same time, like religiously for five, yeah, pretty much, yeah, for about five years. And like I was there every time. It was always like the venue might change, but you know, I tried to keep it as consistent as possible so that people would just know, oh, like this week is the crit. But a lot of people, yeah, they get they get discouraged too fast. They hold a meeting, one person shows up and they're like, eh, you know, like, yeah, it was two people showed up to the first meeting and it took like a year to finally get to like 10 people. I know you like to travel a lot, especially I feel like you've been gone a lot the past like, year. Yeah, I like to get out of New York. Um, I've always kind of, imagine New York as kind of like like the gym you know coming out here and flexing these muscles and then taking like those skills and technique when I go abroad and try to bring like my style that I've developed here to other places so by me like you know doing the New York thing but then going to like 
you know, Bogota or going to Tokyo or something. Maybe my photos will look a little different than like the, the people shooting there that, that live there. It's been years now, but um, Gus Powell once said like photos are either nouns or verbs. And that's always, that's kind of always like in the back of my head. And I very much prefer verbs and verbs don't happen very often. So I find myself not making a lot of photographs as often as I used to. Like, I don't want the photo just to be like describing something like the way somebody looks or like what it, what, you know, what this corner looked like on this time of day and this, like, you know, at this moment. But I don't know, having something a little, you know, just a little extra, a little extra something happening, something going on. Is there an example of a photo that you've taken that kind of ha can be described as a verb and not a noun? Um, so the first one that comes to mind is I, w I went to um, Newport, Rhode Island, and I was wandering around and I found like this, this like little, like, like a dock. And there was like, like teenage, you know, uh, kids jumping off into the water. It could have just been a photo of people standing on a dock, but I waited until the kid like jumped, you know, he was running and jumping over the rail and into the water, you know, like spread eagle, like, or you know, his arms spread out. And so like, that was like the verb, like the kid jumping. So a photo that's kind of like always messed with my brain that I took or has been like since taking it has really messed with my brain, taking on a Mamiya 7. Um, there was a there was a, a cowboy guy from uh, Wyoming. He was walking along Fifth Avenue, and like I saw him, and I decided to follow him to see if he would do any, you know, do something interesting. Like I just didn't want to take a photo of a guy in a cowboy hat with a handlebar mustache. I was like, hmm, like let me wait to see if something more exciting happens. As I'm following him for a few blocks, like I don't even know, like three photographers did the cross flash. You know, kept it moving and it, his wife was laughing about it. Like, what is going on? I, I saw that happening and I was like, well, I don't want one of those. Finally, I catch him um, off to the side looking at flowers. We kind of posed it again so that I was like, hey, that looks cool. Like the colors are cool. Let's let, like, let me try to get that. And uh, yeah, I took that photo. What kind of messed me up was like, or you know, that kind of affected how I felt about what I was doing, my photography was those circumstances to align are very rare. And it's like, man, like, like this is never going to happen again. I, like, I, I really like that photo and I'm probably don't think I'm going to ever get one that I like as much or more. And so I kind of like, I don't know, took some gas out of the, I, I, don't know, I don't know, out of the balloon or something, some air out of the balloon. But yeah, you know, well, and another, I guess, idea is like a lot of the photos that I like, I, you know, I didn't really like consciously make. Like, I wasn't aware of it at the time. It wasn't until like later when I look at it that I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Well, what are some of those photos? Like some examples? Like there's a photo I took on a cold day, I wanna say April, 2018. Up until that point, like, I don't know, it was like six months that I felt like I hadn't taken any decent photos. I was crossing the street on kind of by the Filipino embassy when I took a photo, you know, something in my brain prompted me to lift the camera and take that photo. And it was only the one photo. I got a bunch of people where like their steps are in sync. There's like four people on, on, on the right side of the frame and they're like, their steps are all in sync. There's an interesting person in the middle. There's somebody over here cross tying their shoe. And then the crosswalk sign also has the white guy crossing the, you know, the legs. Uh, and that's again, like one of those things where like, you know, subconsciously, like my brain saw something and then the muscle reaction or memory just took the photo. And I like that photo. I thought it was pretty cool. And it made me like feel like, oh, okay, not all hope is lost. I can, I can still kind of do this. You ever think about legacy and stuff like that? Like yeah. what you'll leave behind or what will yeah. be said about you? Absolutely. I think, um, I think that's kind of was one of big, like, I don't know, early on, when I started taking photos, I kind of, you know, I realized that I, I probably would never, I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I'll probably never be like a great photographer, but maybe I can make a cool thing, you know, that is more than me as an individual and like something that when I'm gone can like live on and be something for a lot of people. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of one of the driving factors in establishing NYCSPC and building contact photo. 
you know, I, I want to get into publishing, you know, just working with photographers I think are making cool stuff and trying to put something together for them, make it as accessible as possible. I'm stretched kind of thin, like contact photo is, is basically like I'm trying to build a school, run a photo lab, run a gallery and coordinate events. You know, so that's like a lot of things that require a lot of people scheduling and like getting people to commit to doing things. What does success look like to you? Like what, what, what would it mean to be successful? Not having to work. Like if I could build all these things and it not feel like work and I can pay my rent and buy film, occasionally a few times a year, fly off somewhere. You ever shoot black and white? Yeah, yeah, I shot black and white exclusively for a few years. I, uh, I go back and forth. Uh, mostly color, but sometimes I'll, I don't know, I want to put on my Dido hat and try to go out and do some black and white stuff. Pizza? Hey, what's up? Yeah. Oh, nice. Where'd you get it? Is it good? Yeah. Yeah? Nice. I won't. Now you're making me hungry. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Where do you think street photography goes in the next 10 years? What, is, what do you think it'll be like? Same, same. There'll be people out here, people on the streets taking pictures. There's always going to be people that want to come out, walk around with a camera and photograph people doing people's stuff. I do worry about the film stuff. I really don't think, at least for color film, I don't think color film will be around in 10 years. Like chemistry, like, you know, the, the supporting ecosystem, like it's just not, it's not around. Black and white, probably. That'll probably be around for a long, long time. But color film? Are there three photographs of yours that you think best kind of represent your style of photography or your body of work? I think the, the little girl in the newsstand. I don't know, I kind of think sometimes my photos are funny and I think I like funny photos. I think the cowboy, you know, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, those two for now. We'll circle back. There's like that one with like the cop and like the... Yeah, the zombie. Yeah, I think that was pretty good. That was yeah, good. that was good. It kind of has maybe some like political metaphor thing happen in there. Cop, a zombie, Uncle Sam. They all had like, like, like mirror sunglasses. And then the one guy put it up. Just didn't come together. What was something that could have happened that would have made you hit that? If they all had like, like if they were like in a V formation and like I saw it briefly and then the guy turned and put put his glasses on his head. But like, I don't know, having them like in a little V formation, they all have their sunglasses. And then the flash would have created like this weird effect. I think that would have been interesting. Finish the sentence. I take photos because. It's something I'm kind of good at. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll come back to that one. I take photos because. Oh, oh. I guess I take photos because I mean, I, 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 sometimes I enjoy it. Like I just, I like being outside. I like walking around, I don't know, trying to be present, you know, which I think is very difficult for me. Having a camera in my hand sometimes gives me a moment to like, all that goes away and I can just, I don't know, just walk and look and observe and listen and, and um, you know, try to catch something cool in a box. Right, that's gonna do it for this episode of Walkie Talkie. George, thanks for hanging out with me. Let everybody know where they can show you some love. Yeah, uh, so my Instagram photos by Jorge underscore. Um, if you wanna check out the New York City Street Photography Collective stuff, you can find that at NYC SPC. Um, if you're interested in the gallery school photo lab stuff, um, you can find the gallery school thing at, at, uh, at contact photo NYC. The lab is Contact Photo Lab NYC. Um, so yeah, check them out. Uh, you can send us film, you can drop off film. We got free mailing stuff. Um, so I don't know, uh, check us out. And if you have any questions, you know, shoot me a DM or an email, happy to talk. Thanks, Polly. Thank you for inviting me on to a walkie talkie. Of course, how could we not, man? Yeah, this is like the peak of my photo career. <laughs> this is it.
<laughs> we know that's not true. <laughs> all right, man. Yeah. Later. Now when they see us in the streets, all they want to do is take pictures.